This video is a part of my series on the PIA's Prepress Trainees uh, Manual presented for the Fullerton College Printing Technology Department Prepress classes, print 75 and 77 respectively. This is Professor Ben Kewitt. Hello and welcome. This will be part one of three for the task 2.1, design and typography. Trying to avoid uh, PowerPoint karaoke here. We're not gonna read everything yet again, uh, but I'll give you some good color commentary as necessary. And if anything is really, really important, I'll emphasize it by saying it, even though the words say it on your screen and you're all capable of reading. So we're gonna look at some basics on typefaces, how to categorize them, how they are categorized, what styles are available, what formats are used, what kind of spacing is out there, how do you measure it, and we'll also talk about the English Point and American Standard uh, systems of measurement and how they play with each other. <clears throat> Fonts and families. So a typeface is basically a version of how letters work or how they look. A typeface is typically a family of fonts. A font is an individual uh, look of words. Fonts are things like Helvetica, Futura, Jensen, Caslon, Puh, Comic Sans, that I had to say it. Um, so anyways, it used to matter, the difference between a typeface and a font was font was uh, one of this particular size variations, but now that you're on computer and all the typefaces are done digitally, font and typeface, you can say either one, it's potato, potato. But if you're talking to professionals in print or graphics and you want to sound a bit snootier, like you actually know what you're doing, call it a typeface. Don't make a big deal out of it. Just refer to them as typefaces. Even if the people you're talking to say font, you can sound like you know what you're doing if you call it a typeface because a single digital file can produce any size type. You just change the size. It's all vector information, which we'll talk about later this semester. So a font family is all the different variations. So if you have, gosh, I wish Arial wasn't the first thing on there. Uh, we'll skip down to Baskerville because I prefer it. You can have Baskerville as a Roman, italic, bold, bold italic. There's also a lot of semi-bolds for a lot of the older sans serifs. I'm sorry, older serif types. Can't believe I got that one wrong. Uh, I will leave that in though. I misspeak sometimes. A lot of companies are involved. There are, they used to be called foundries because they used to actually found them as in melt metal down and pour it into molds. It's a foundry is a place that makes molded metal. Um, but they still call them type foundries even though it's all digital nowadays. Um, Adobe, Linotype, ITC, there's a bunch out there that still exist. The good ones make the best fonts and they charge money for them. And if you want to use them, you should probably purchase them properly and pay for them. And or they come with your software. Uh, Adobe has licensing to a ton of these things. So they all ship with their product now. Uh, you buy the uh, Creative Suite, sorry. You rent the Creative Cloud and with that subscription also comes access to a lot of really good fonts. Uh, most of the ones that come from them are good and they purchase the best. So on the right, it's a stack of them. I really like some of these and uh, we'll go into some more detail. And at some point when I go off into a tangent, I'll talk about why Baskerville is so cool. So at one point, type was a physical object. Uh, the very first type, at least in the Western world, was made by Johannes Gutenberg himself, who invented the printing press as we know it in Germany in the 1400s. He used his own special alloy of lead, tin, and antimony that he made to get a metal that would melt at a low temperature and yet be very durable to long prolonged use of being smashed at 67 pounds of pressure against a sheet of paper. And paper is more abrasive than you realize. Uh, if you rub paper against things, it actually acts as a sandpaper and will remove surfaces. Anyways, and it also has to be strong enough to hold thin little lines. So it was a physical object made out of metal. Uh, way older than this because most real inventions actually come from China and they actually come from a very, very long time ago. Um, they're just not so open with their histories and their old secrets. Anyways, there was carved wooden Chinese type way before Gutenberg and maybe that's where he got his idea from. But theirs wasn't made out of a melted, a, mel a meltable reusable metal the way his was. Anyways, metal type got, pre got mass produced at one point 
Um, wood, wooden type was also a thing for a while, especially during the Industrial Revolution where woodworking machines could be largely semi-automated and uh, very accurate and quick, and wood is cheaper than metal. So wood, metal, and film also happened. There was a time when type was all done as a film negative and you would project a light beam through that film negative and that would then burn the type you wanted onto uh, another piece of film that you would develop and use that piece of film as a negative to then develop the plate. Again, paste up. It was a lot of work. Here's the two basic types of type. There's serif and there's sans serif. Sans or sans uh, is the French word for without. The serif are those little notchy feet on the bottom of the A. Those little feet, they're serifs. A serif is also a word for little angels, little a graceful angel like you'd have in the edge of an old hand-drawn illuminated manuscript. So the serifs are those little flourishes on the end. They're holdovers from the days when type was not type, but was Roman, and it was carved into monuments by hand with a chisel. And if you didn't put a finishing stroke on the end of your letters, then your letters would chip and break and your nice monument to your Roman emperor wouldn't look very good, would it? So you either have it or you don't. My family's actually from back east, although I was grown. I was born and grew up here in Southern California. My dad's from Connecticut. My mom is from upstate New York by way of South Africa. Anyways, back east in Philadelphia, another important city there, there is a place called Pats. Pats was the original and possibly the best, of course, this is contended by the restaurant across the street, as the origination of the famous Philly cheesesteak. If you go to buy a sandwich at Pat's, and you should if you're ever in Philly, you have two options, wit or wit out. They're referring to onions, wit or wit out. And that's what your serif versus sans serif type is. Serif is wit, sans is wit out. Those are your two types. There are other things out there too. Um, beyond the basic texts that you'd use to print books, you also have scripts that emulate handwriting and novelty fonts that look really fun or weird or silly or try to emulate some movie poster you saw once. And these are dangerous to use and you wanna use them carefully and in small quantities. Style variations. Roman kind of means basic. Your basic letters are your Roman letter form. Your italic letters are slanted. My dad always said the best way to remember italic is to think of the Leaning Tower of Pisa in Italy. It leans to the side. It's slanted. Just like italic type, it's slanted to the side. Bold is thicker. Bold italic is thicker and slanted. There are many others. If you get into the Helvetica Noi, I think it's pronounced Noi. Uh, I'll put my foot in my mouth when someone tells me how you actually say Noi, Nua, or whatever. But the newer versions of Helvetica have so many versions of style variations from Roman to medium to thick to kind of thick to very thick to bold to black to amazingly thick letters and also down very thin to thin, ultra light, ultra thin, and all these very small versions um, that make the type bigger and smaller, thicker and thinner, but generally share the same basic letter form as the Roman. There's other things you can get instead of just bold and otherwise. There's also condensed and expanded. Condensed means the letters are narrower. Extended means they're wider. Condensed sans serif types are really popular and look really good and are very readable. I don't see extended use very much. Univer, by the way, is one of the losing competitors in the triad that was supposed to be Helvetica, Futura, Univer, but the big controversy was between Helvetica and Futura and Univer just kind of fell behind. Um, in Apple computer terms, Univer is your Steve Wozniak. And that's about it for today's uh, thing. We're gonna start talking about this one next time. Maybe I'll say it twice so we can overlap a little. These are terms for measuring type. The X height is the height of a lowercase letter X, and that is also known as the body height. That's the basic size of a type. Ascenders are the parts that stick up over the top of that line of the type of the X height, and descenders are anything that hang below the X height. But again, I'll probably retread this ground in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Stay tuned for the next two videos from this chapter.